Alrighty y'all, this is World Class Jerk, and today we're going to be talking about the top three best planets in Astroneer. But what exactly is it that we mean by that? Well, by the top three best planets in Astroneer, we're basically aiming best at early game, because in the late game, the best planet depends on what resource you're after. Because if you're after a resource, say sulfur, then you want to go to the planet that's best for sulfur if you're going to mass produce it, which happens to be Kalidor. But in the early game, you may want to aim for a planet that has a wider variety of resources if it also includes sulfur, even if the sulfur is not quite as good on that planet because you want to preserve your blast-offs and you just want to be more efficient because it's the early game. And so, with that in mind, this list is basically going to be, again, including plants that have good combos of resources for the early game, and so, we're gonna get started off right now with number one. Alrighty, y'all, coming in at number three is going to be Aatrox, and the thing about Aatrox is that it just sucks in general, mainly what I'm referring to in reference to that is its atmosphere, this place is all dark and gloomy. If you want to build a base somewhere, this is the last place you want to build it because it's not going to give you a nice and nice atmosphere, but there is one thing that's good about Aatrox, and that it's, that's its wide variety of resources. Now, it doesn't actually have any key raw, raw resources, such as, you know, titanium, iron. It doesn't have anything like that, which is kind of weird, but it does have a lot of gases. But another thing about Aatrox that we're going to mention first, which is pretty interesting, is that you can find refined resources, and what I found on my ventures was glass and aluminum. That is what I found on broken down uh, platforms, I guess you could say, in the caves. I did find glass and aluminum, but word on the street is that you can also rarely find diamonds and nanocarbon alloy, which is a big win, but I personally haven't found them, so either they're very rare or I'm being troped. But the main point of Aatrox is the gases. The gases you can find are nitrogen, methane, sulfur, and helium. Nitrogen sucks, but I wanted to make the platform symmetrical, so I decided to put it on here anyways. Nitrogen is much better on the home planet, so do not get it here. Methane cannot be found anywhere else at the rate it's found here. This is the best place to get methane. The only other place you can get methane is on Novus, but this is where you want to come for methane, so come here for methane. Sulfur can only be found here and on Kalidor, and it is better on Kalidor than here, but it's pretty good here still, so if you're already on Aatrox, if you already have a base on Aatrox, there's no sense in going to Kalidor unless you are late game and you want to make things as efficient as possible. And helium, this is the special thing. This is really the key thing of, uh, of, uh, of Aatrox. This is the reason you want to like Aatrox the most. It is helium. This is the only place in the entire game where you can get helium. But it does suck. It's at a rate of 25 PPU, as it says in the atmosphere condenser here. 25 PPU, it can be 25, 50, 75, or 100 for gases. This is the lowest at 25 PPU, which sucks. But if you automate the process, it's not so bad. And that's the only choice you have with helium, because this is the only place you can find it. But yep, that's all that is there to say. That's all there is to say about Aatrox. And so the conclusion is you can save yourself blast offs by coming here for some of the resources because you can get many resources on the same planet here, even though some of them, such as sulfur, is not the best here. You still could come here for efficiency purposes. For example, if you already have a base here, get sulfur here instead of going to Kalidor because it's better on Kalidor because you want to use your early game resources efficiently. This is a good thing in the early game, having all things on one planet like this, because between the home planet and Aatrox, you have almost every gas available to you, which is great, and that helps you to propel yourself into the late game. But with that being said, we're going to move on to number two. Going into number two, my friends, is going to be Glacio, which is my personal favorite planet, but because of technicality, it cannot rank with number one, and you will see why later. But the first reason why Glacio is an amazing planet is because of bites. These things right here can be found in caves on those weird-looking rock things, I don't really know what you'd call them, but you can find these in the caves, and each of these, when you hold F on them, will give you 350 bytes, just like that, yes, it gives you 350 bytes just for holding F, and that is incredible, that is overpowered, this will absolutely thrust you from the beginning game into the late game, this is a very powerful planet, this is the first planet you should visit when you get a rocket, and also, fun fact, revolving around these, is that if you put them in the research chamber, you will get nearly three times as many bytes, but if you gather them in bulk, it is not worth the wait, so you should just hold F on them instead. But moving on to resources. For the raw resources that you can find on this planet, we have hematite, which is iron when smelted, and titanite, which is titanium when smelted. Who would have known that one? But these two resources are also very important, so in addition to coming here for bites, you can also take these back with you, which will also help you later on in the game. It is a very good planet to land on as a first planet to land on. And that is awesome, and even more so, there is Argon, and this is the best place in the entire game to get Argon, so there's that as well, on top of everything else. And so, yes, it has so much to offer, it has such a wide variety of things to offer, 
I mean, Aatrox has a wide variety of gases to offer, but this has a wide variety of things in general, even bites included. That's why I think it's better than Aatrox, especially since it's very, very key to use this planet to get from beginning game into late game because of how many bites you can get. Oh, but yeah, basically, in conclusion, the bites that you can get here complements the fact that there are a lot of resources here as well, because you can use the bites to unlock stuff that you will need these resources for. And so, all in one trip, you can do a lot of late game work just by using your first rocket to blast off and bringing these things back. It is an incredible experience, and the bites are extra easy to get, because all you need is a line of tethers. You do not need a research chamber at all. Very, very powerful. And so with that being said, we're going to be moving on to number one. Coming in at number one is going to be Silva, also known as the home planet, the planet you start on when you first spawn into the game. Now I know what you're thinking. We all already know that the resources here are important and that you need this planet to progress in the game. So it's stupid to put it on this list. But I don't care. Also, I kind of have to. It's the most versatile planet after all. It has so much of just a little bit of everything. Of course, it doesn't have everything, but it has a wide, wide variety of things. It has a crap ton of stuff. These resources here now, obviously, every planet has some of these, such as these two and this, and then you can get a lot of this in the soil centrifuge. But my point still stands that it's the easiest to get most of these resources here, and so I just have to include this planet because technically it is the best. Probably, you know, just looking at the facts here. Also, it is the very best planet for some resources, probably aluminum being among them, and these two right here, well, not hydrogen, but nitrogen at least, and we really do take that for granted, because I know it seems like nitrogen's cheap, but that's only because the home planet is typically the one we're best set up on. I mean, imagine if we started off on Glacio or Aatrox or something. Nitrogen would then be an expensive resource for us then, and so you understand this planet does have some key qualities that other planets do not, and so it's again important to include those when considering what the best planet is, and I still think it's this one. In addition to all that, obviously, this is the easiest planet to base on, because... You have to do it at the very start. It is the easiest planet to base on without existence from other planets. You don't have to go to any other planets for stuff you need to base on this one. Now, I know it's ridiculous to mention all this stuff because we all already know it, but I do have to go over the key points as to why it's the best planet, because it is. And so basically, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. It's easy to get all the home planet resources, and it would the resources that seem very cheap are only cheap because we're used to starting on this planet. And if we start on other planets, this planet would seem a lot more useful than we typically think it does. And so that's the conclusion. I hope you guys enjoyed this stuff, and uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, have a nice day, because this is a kind of abrupt outro here, but I just wanted to make sure we all understand this This is my outro, okay? And so, I mean, I feel like i got to say something now, though. Like, maybe you should join my Discord link in the description and become a jerk today. Hit the subscribe button. Tap the notification bell, like button as well. Uh, some, I'm forgetting something. Comments and suggestions. Uh, but yeah, have a nice day.